So welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how we analyze multiple response questions in Stutter. Uh, in my previous video, I showed you how multiple response questions are entered in Microsoft Excel and I've used the same data. I've imported it already into Excel here, uh, into uh, Stutter here. And uh, if you didn't watch my previous video or in Excel, I recommend you first watch that one before you watch this one so that you can coordinate and be able to understand it very well. And um, just to bring to your attention in this data, uh, we had 10 respondents. It was just a sample question. Maybe we can browse and see. So uh, this is the same Excel data that I used in my previous video and it is the same that I've imported in Stata here for analysis. So we had 10 respondents with these respective IDs, their respective gender and then uh, the sports that they play and here are the different sports and how we have entered them as described in the uh, previous video of entering it in Microsoft Excel. So before we analyze this data, I would love you to know a few things. One being, uh, depending on the version of Stata that you're using, you might find that the syntax that is used to analyze multiple response questions is not available in your Stata. But the good news is there is always an online uh, available package that you can install and then uh, you can use it uh, for analysis. And note that uh, when installing these packages, your computer should be connected to the internet. It should be in position to access internet. So uh, before we analyze, in case yours does not have that syntax or does not recognize that syntax, it means it is not installed with your starter, but you can install it. So let me show you how you can do that. So uh, when we are finding or when we are installing uh, packages that are not by default available in starter, we can use a command find it find it is one word and then the syntax that we are interested in which is mrtab that is mrtab which is representing multiple response tabulation so you are telling starter to find it find where it is because you want to install so i run when we press enter so there's this dialog box that pops up and we have this sj5-1 st0 uh, 082 there is this code here which is having our uh, package files and we click on it it's what we're interested in yours may be having a different code no matter what you just tap it and then you see what it has to tell you so when i open mine i can see installation files are here there are three we have one for mr tab when one for mr graph and then the mr svmat and on the right and here we are having click here to install so this is where you click to install uh, your package and uh, for me mine is already installed and uh, just for demonstration purposes I'm going to click it so it tells me checking that package consistency and verifying if not already installed let's wait and see what it gives me so mine is telling me all files already exist and are up to date so no need to reinstall it for you you can install and you'll, it will tell you at the end that installation successful in case it is successfully installed. So with that we can go back and analyze. So since we have already installed our package for multiple response tabulation, we can now go ahead and analyze. And the command is mrtab, which is multiple response tabulation space. And then there are two ways we can do this. You can either select those variables one at a time until you list all of them and you press enter and here we get our descriptive statistics table or we can use the same command mr tab and then we select the first one dash to the last one and run enter it still gives us the same uh, table so i recommend the second option because if you have very many like 10 of them which you have to select the waste for you a lot of time so when you just put the first one a dash and then the last variable you run it gives you all the values at once so how do we interpret uh, this uh, multiple response uh, descriptive statistics that we have received as we can note it's not like the usual descriptive statistics here we have two percentages we have the percent of responses which totals up to 100 and then we have the percent of cases which totals up to 210 so you might be puzzled why 
uh, uh, the, the, the percent has to go up to 210. So it's what brings about the differences here. So what's the difference between percent of response and the percent of cases? So for pers uh, uh, note that we also have our respective frequencies here. And as I said earlier, remember we had 10 respondents, as we can see here, valid cases. But under frequencies, we have 21. Why? Because uh, in multiple response uh, questions, you find that each individual can respond, give more than one response. So that's why all these 21 responses were from 10 uh, respondents. So uh, when we are getting percent of case uh, of responses, uh, it is got from getting um, uh, the value of the frequency that is 4 out of the total number of responses uh, which gives us 19.05 while this one is 6 out of 21 we get 28.57 and this is the accurate uh, uh, percent that we report while writing the report uh, so whereas for percent of cases instead of getting it out of the total number of responses it gets it out of the total number of cases or respondents for example this one this 40 percent was got out of 4 divided by 10 we get 46 divided by 10 we get 60 same here then 5 divided by 10 we get 50 so uh, those are the major differences between percent of responses and then the percent of cases it's basically uh, determined by which denominator was used and as I said the most accurate one which we used in the reports is the percent of responses so thank you so much uh, for watching this video please remember to subscribe like and then drop any comment in the comment section below